this is just joined us. You're watching the news at 10 on Channel Television, coming to you live from Lagos. So remind me of our top stories. Senate public hearing uncovers details where there has been no appropriation for kerosene subsidy. Also accepts to engage independent auditors. 2014 budget passes second reading in the House of Representatives, despite mandate of the All Progressives Congress to its lawmakers. Our big story tonight looks at the impending repatriation of about 500 Nigerian prisoners from the United Kingdom and the U.S. condemns the release of 65 detainees from Afghanistan's High Security Detention Center. I have a quick reminder to you that all our top stories are on our website, channelstv.com, and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. To get us on the move, please visit m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. Of course, you can now interact with the channel's eyewitness feature on our Android and Windows 8 platforms. So if you have pictures or videos to share with us, tap on the application on your device, swipe to review the eyewitness menu, and then follow the instructions to share your reports, pictures, and videos. Well, some of you have already done so. And here are some of the eyewitness reports that we've received. Now, this picture shows a tipper which ran into a church at Shotoba Shagamu, Ogun State, in the early hours of today, killing a woman who was among those attending a morning mass. Fortunately, her baby survived. Anywhere in Lagos, this is what part of the Ushodi Papa Expressway looks like on a daily basis. There's always heavy traffic by the warehouse bus stop owing to the obstruction caused by tankers parked along the roadside. We would like to thank you for your eyewitness reports and do ask you to keep them coming. Well, the Senate today continued the screening of ministerial nominees in Abuja, the nation's capital. This follows Wednesday's screening of six nominees. The first proposed minister for confirmation was the former Adamawa State Governor, Boni Haruna, who presented his resume before the lawmakers and attested to his incorruptibility while in office. Some lawmakers from Adamawa State also supported his claim and spoke about the impact he made in agriculture and education. Others screened include Dr. Kaliru Al-Hassan from Sokoto State and Abdul Jalil Adeshina from Oshun State. Now, in just five months, President Goodluck Jonathan has shown 13 of his ministers the door. Since the latest sack which happened on Wednesday, there have been reactions to the development, but the main opposition party, the APC, has frowned on the action of the presidency. But the presidency has defended its actions and has asked the APC to look beyond its usual criticisms and come up with constructive suggestions for the nation. Our political correspondent Shion Okindale reports. Five months ago, precisely September the 11th, 2013, President Jonathan sacked nine ministers. And on February the 12th, 2014, four more were sent parking. The process of replacing the ones booted out last year is still ongoing as the nominees face the heat of the National Assembly screening. On Tuesday, when the President fired his Chief of Staff, Mr. Michael Giadome, perhaps no one saw the ministers marching orders coming. The main opposition party, APC, is criticizing the presidency over the recent cabinet shakeup. I think the Indians have waited for a very long time for a cabinet reshuffle of any form, of any sort. And I think um, the general feeling that is a bit too little and too late. Uh, the Mr. President probably lost a bit of opportunity to redeem himself 
and convinced Nigerians that his fight against corruption was sincere. Meanwhile, the presidency is not leaving those criticisms lying low. What you saw yesterday was the president exercising that prerogative. And I think that's just, that is just what has, has happened. And it, uh, it does not require anybody delivering the issue at all. What we expect from APC, really, is to take the level of political discourse, you know, to step it up, you know, a bit. Not just to blow hot air at every given opportunity. There have been several reactions to the recent shakeup of the president's cabinet, especially as it relates to the Minister of Aviation, Stella Udua, after the controversy over the purchase of armored cars by the ministry. However, another major concern for some Nigerians is a vacuum that may have been left in the ministries as one minister in one case is asked to supervise more than one ministry. The machinery of government is, is going on. New ministers are being screwed. Former ministers are going on with their job. The president is, is, you know, is, you know, is, is still hands on the job. For the curious mind, the recent actions of the president may not be for nothing, but of greater importance is how the president's transformation agenda will impact on Nigerians ultimately. Now, the immediate past Chief of Army Staff, retired Lieutenant General Onyabo Hejeleka, has blamed the increasing case of terrorism in Nigeria on militia activities in neighboring African countries. At a farewell ceremony in Abuja to pull him out of the Nigerian army, Lieutenant General Hejeleka says the menace help can, however, be resolved quickly if people volunteer information to the security agencies. The event attracted top serving and retired military officers. passing through an increasingly volatile and uncertain and ambiguous 21st century. Our situation in Nigeria has been made complex by regional and transnational threats, further accelerated by the information technology, desertification, international migration across the borders, Competition for scarce resources, weapons proliferation, and several unresolved technological conflicts. In the last few years, we have had to deploy the Nigerian army extensively at home and abroad, along with other services. I'm proud to have been part of our nation's quest for a more peaceful world. Through many interactions using different platforms and forums, we have tried to strengthen critical partnership both local and international. The menace of terrorism and insurgency will, will be resolved quickly if we appreciate the sacrifices being made by the service personnel. Now, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission appears set to reduce the number of Nigerians in the labor market. The Commission on Thursday presented a draft regulation that will ensure manpower development and provision of goods and services in the industry post-privatization are in keeping with the local content policy. Now, the legislation is also to mandate companies in the sector to make provision for training of Nigerians in cases where specific skills are lacking. All right, now when the news at 10 returns, IMEC chairman at Ahiro Joga visits Oshun State, where all political aspirants to remove their posters from public places. Just a minute.